Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of War in Heaven, War on Earth. To recap, on parts one and two, we found out that God created the angels. How long before he created the angels, before he created the earth, we don't know. Time is not really a, a thing with God when you're eternal, right? So God created the angels, and then he created the earth. Then he created Adam kind. Now, let's... Uh, and then there was war in heaven. Now, I believe that uh, somewhere between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3, that uh, Satan rebelled and a third of his angels with him, and they were cast to the earth. And then Adam and Eve listened to the serpent, that old serpent, the great red dragon, the old serpent called the devil and Satan. Now, the first thing Satan did was he tried to kill God. And what did he do when he came to earth? He lied. He was called the father of lies. In John 8, 44, Jesus speaking to a group of people. Uh, it rhymes with the news. He said, ye are of, of, not like, not follow, not similar to. He said, of. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was the murderer from the beginning? Well, Cain was, but, uh, you know, if Satan's rebellion against God would have been successful, well, that would have been the first murderer, right? A murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of, a, of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And what did he do? What did Satan, the serpent, do? do in Genesis chapter 3, when he told Eve, ye shall not surely die. Now I'm just recapping the first two studies that we did. I think they're about two and two and a half hours of study. So we're just kind of recapping. All right, sometimes the angels are referred to as stars. Keep that in mind. Now, Satan could not kill God. He was cast to the earth. So what did he do? He attacked the thing that God loved, Adam. Adam was made in God's image. So since he couldn't attack God directly, he was going to attack him through the thing he loved, which was Adam. Now, we also found that before God even formed the earth, that the only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, was slain from the foundation of the world before the earth was even formed, or Adam and Eve, Christ was to be our way from the depths of sin to be reconciled unto God the Father. So, all right, let's take a look at a couple of things. Now, we took a look at Genesis chapter 6, where the sons of God, the fallen angels, married the daughters of men. And there were giants in those days, and also after that, think Goliath, David and Goliath. We're going to do a little bit of genealogy on the Canaanites. We're going to, that's going to come up. I'm not sure if it'll be in this study or the next one. But 
the Canaanites, well, you had war in heaven. Now you've got war on earth. Satan and his angels, or Satan's angels, are uh, going to create a war against Adam and his kind and his descendants on earth. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know, uh, in John 8, 44, when he called uh, a certain group of people that were of their father, the devil, uh, you can read verse 48 and you'll know who Christ was talking to here. So if you don't know who Jesus was talking to in John 8, 44, read John 8, 48, and uh, they're answering him, and you can find out who they were talking about. So, all right, let's, uh, let's see, we will talk, I guess we'll start in, um, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. I guess we'll start there. But there were false prophets um, also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. False teachers and false prophets, people. Oh, yeah. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, many shall follow their pernicious ways. Pernicious has reference to being hidden. That's where, that's basically what a cult means. A cult, O-C-C-U-L-T. But actually, uh, witchcraft is not even a, the occult anymore because it's out in the open. You got Harry Potter, and uh, it's just unbelievable the amount of open Satanism there is now. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Oh, yeah. You start speaking the truth of the Bible and the words of Christ, and you're, you'll be evil spoken of. Verse 3. Now, we're talking about these, these evil, these false teachers, uh, the false teachers and false prophets. This is who we're talking about. Verse 3. And through covetousness. Another word for that is greed. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Flying around in their $50 Learjets. Oh, wait, no, that's the Bob translation. With feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now listen carefully. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, there's a couple of different words that are translated as hell. One of those words is the grave, where they place the body. And the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah's Wit Witlesses, Wit, W-I-T-L-E-S-S, -S, uh, the Jehovah's Witless, um, thank you, uh, Super William 24-7, uh, they'll go and say, well, you know, hell's the grave. That's it. See? That's it. But there's other meanings of the word hell. There's a word in the Hebrew, it's Gehenna, which uh, they named a dump 
near Jerusalem after where there was a fire and then they'll, you know, and even if you point that out to them, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll say, well, that was a dump with fire. Yeah, but Jesus in the book of Luke, when he was talking about the rich man and Lazarus, uh, said that the rich man was in flames. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, and Jesus spoke about hell a lot. And then there's a word of the Greek, Tartarus, which was the lowest depths of hell. And their god of uh, Tartarus, his name was Hades. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's one of the names of Satan's angels. Maybe that's the Greek name for hell, the Satan, the devil. I don't know. You know, a lot of that Greek mythology stuff, some of it's probably somewhere in the times past was based on truth to an extent, but of course it got corrupted. So, you know, there's at least three different meanings of the word hell. And uh, if I remember correctly, in verse 4 here, where it talks about the angels being cast down to hell. I believe this is Tartarus, the lowest abyss of hell. So let's keep reading. Verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world. Now, people, this is taking you right back to Genesis chapter 6. The angels that sinned, that the sons of God and the daughters of men, they had giants for children. This is taking you right, right there. I mean, you know, this is all one thought. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Now, guess what? Sodom and Gomorrah were populated by the Canaanites. So let's read verse 6. All right, so in verse 5, we reread, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, Condemn them with an overthrow, making them, them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. You know, God made Sodom and Gomorrah an example to those that want to live ungodly. And let me tell you something, people. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was Werner Kemplinger. Kemplinger? He did the, uh, a book called The Bible as History. And around the Dead Sea, they started digging down into the sand, and they found a layer of glass in the sand. It takes a couple of thousand degrees to, to melt sand and turn it into glass. There was something that burned so hot that turned the sand into glass. You know where they, when they found this, sand turned into glass? The Nevada test deserts, when they were testing the atomic bomb. That's when they saw sand turn to glass. There is nothing in nature that burns hot enough in the open air to turn sand into glass. Yeah, you can do it in a blast furnace. 
but you're doing it in an enclosed area that holds the heat in and you're feeding in extra oxygen to raise the temperature up to the 2,000 something degrees Fahrenheit that it needs to turn the sand and melt it into glass. You can't build an open air fire in the desert that's going to turn sand into glass. It just, there's nothing hot enough in nature to do it. And yet they found a layer of glass in the desert by the, Red, the Dead Sea. And according to history and legend, Sodom and Gomorrah were in that area. God rained fire and brimstone down upon those cities that were originally inhabited by the Canaanites. We're going to get into that later. So, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous they are, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Oh yeah, they'll sit next to you in church at the potluck dinner. Verse 14, what are their characteristics? Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. Do you know what that word beguiling means? It has several shades of meaning, but it means to seduce. You could be spiritually seduced. You could be spiritually seduced. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and, have, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages, wages of unrighteousness. He's the one that had the, uh, the talking ass that uh, rebuked him. If you've never read the Old Testament, people, you really should. But was rebuked. Balaam was, uh, Balaam was hired by one of the Canaanite kings to go and curse Israel. And the Lord told him, don't, don't do it. He was a prophet. He was a prophet, and um, he decided he wanted money more than he wanted God. So, uh, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. What good is a, a, a dry well? It's useless, people. Clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Hell is likened unto darkness. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, 
They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. Uh, those of you that are dog lovers and, uh, uh, and their housekeeping staff, uh, I, my dad always loved dogs. I mean, let's face it, dogs are, uh, they're just pure love. You take care of them and they'll take a bullet for you if, if, if they can in a home invasion. But the thing is, a dog will eat something and throw it up, and he'll go right back and, and gulp it down again. And that's a true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, the pig, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You could take a pig and baptize it, I mean give it a wash, and it goes right back into the mud where the pigs go to the bathroom in the mud. And they'll, you can wash them clean, baptize them, they'll go right back into the mud pit, the cesspool of this world. All right, let's go to the book of Jude. All right, let's go Jude. Verse 1. Jude only has one chapter, so, you know. Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Uh, uh, James, I guess Jude, James and Jude were uh, two brothers, and guess what? They had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Keep that in mind. Guess who they grew up with? And brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen carefully. For there are certain men crept in unawares. People weren't aware that these certain men were creeping in. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old, ordained to this condemnation. Why would he say men of old ordained to this condemnation? Because they were the fallen angel hybrid, human hybrids, people. I mean, come on. This is the only thing that makes sense. And they're ordained to condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. You ever heard people say, once saved, always saved, eternal security? All you got to do is believe on Jesus Christ and it doesn't matter what sin you do, you're saved and going to heaven. You could be a hitman for the mafia. You can uh, be a prostitute, whatever, you know. Uh, because you believe in Jesus, you're going to heaven. 
Now, it isn't our works that save us, people. Don't, don't get me wrong. But your works reflect what you believe. I mean, Jesus said, you know, Jesus even said, uh, you know, the woman caught in adultery. He said, go and sin no more. I mean, you know, that doesn't mean we're going to be uh, sinless perfection, but you should strive for it. You know, you, you can't be a hitman for the mafia and claim that you're a Christian. It just... It just doesn't work, people. You know, what you do is going to reflect what you believe. And if you don't believe me, read James chapter 2. And that's what they do. They turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our, uh, and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. What's he talking about here? He's talking about the fallen angels. They got kicked out of heaven. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, there you go again. Didn't we just read that in 2 Peter 2? They were talking about the fallen angels, and they talked about Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh. Yeah, the fallen angels went after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Now, if you don't know it, uh, God himself buried Moses. And I believe the reason being is uh, they didn't want digging up his bones and, and making a I don't know, some kind of a, an idol out of it or something. Uh, there, was, there was a verse in the Bible, Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, um, who had twice asked for a double portion of Elijah's power and was granted that. He, uh, he did all kinds of miracles. He was buried, and some people threw a dead man into his grave and the dead man touched his bones and came back to life. I, you know, that's some... <laughs> I did a Bible study on that. I'm not sure I could find it, but uh, you can read about it yourself. Do a, a, a search on E-L-I-S-H-A. Um, seriously, they, they touched Elisha's bones and they came back to life. The guy came back to life. So... So the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. 
Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. First murder, right? And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. Now, Cori was a Levite, which was the tribe of the priests, and he opposed Moses. And you can read about that, I think it's in the book of Exodus. But uh, he tried to challenge Moses for his leadership. And of course, the Lord responded by the earth opening up her mouth and swallowing Corey and his family and then closing up upon him. That was God's answer. Verse 12, the Bible tells you these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Why are they twice dead? They're dead physically and they're going to be and they're dead spiritually. Twice dead. The Bible talks uh, somebody pronounced double double destruction upon them. That's what I think it was King David that uh, asked for double destruction upon the Lord's enemies. Spiritually and physically. Double destruction. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars. You know, we did a, uh, and I think it was part two, we did a thing, or maybe it was part one of this series, where the stars were likened to angels, people. Read Job 38. They're wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. I guess he wanted to get a point across that they were ungodly. Verse 16, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there would be mockers in the last time, who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. All right, so if some of you are not convinced about the, uh, the Canaanites, excuse me, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. 
Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came. Now who's the enemy? The devil, right? The fallen angels, Satan. But while men slept, Adam, spiritually, probably, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? In other words, uh, sir, you didn't you plant wheat in this field? Where did all these weeds come from? Verse 28. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. This one verse alone destroys the pre-trib rapture. The weeds get gathered first. Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 36. Or now we're going to read Matthew chapter 13, verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. In other words, we don't get it. Explain this to us, please. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the word, the world. The field is the world. The good seed... You know, they use that word a lot with children. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Huh. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. You know what the word devil is? It's the word evil with a D in front of it. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. And he shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, do we need to go any more? I mean, let's face it. Jude and P Second Peter, that we've just read, you know, they're talk they're talking about the fallen angels, people. I mean, you know. But if you haven't listened to part one and part two, you need to. It's the foundation. All right. Um, now, please understand. When you read Matthew chapter 1, uh, Jesus is, 
in the Bible is called the only begotten Son of God. Adam is called the Son of God. And then the fallen angels are called the Sons of God, Job 38. Believers are not called sons of God until they're born again of the Holy Spirit. Let's read 1 John chapter 3. And then we'll probably close this out because, and I'll start covering the Canaanites. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Now, this isn't until the New Testament, people. We're not called sons of God until the New Testament. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Who are they talking about, Jesus? Just like he is in his glorified form, we're going to be in glorified bodies. Verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. What's sin? Sin's breaking the law. That's, that is the definition of sin. First John tells you right here. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Christ, that's in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him, Christ, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning." For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. That's right. You've been told uh, once saved, always saved, uh, eternal security, and you think you could be a hitman from the mafia. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother in need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, 
How dwelleth the love of God in him? You know, basically, when you see your brother in need and you have no compassion on him and you've got a bunch of good, you know, you've got all kinds of goods that you could help him with, but you don't do it? John asks, how dwelleth the love of God in him? People read James chapter 2. That ties right in to what this is saying. You know, somebody comes to you, a believer in the faith, and they have something, you know, they, they're, they're out in the, the, the winter and, and it's cold, and they don't have a coat, and you got five coats in your, in your closet, and you haven't worn four of them in years. You wouldn't reach in your closet and give him one? What kind of faith is that? And seeth his brother hath have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That's right, your deeds, your works. You know, just don't just talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Remember God, Jesus, somebody asked Jesus what was the great commandment? He said, love the Lord. And he said, the second commandment was like unto the first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. On all these hang all the law and the prophets. I'm paraphrasing, but. Uh, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You don't do good works to be saved. You do good works because. You are saved. Verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach? No. That we should believe on the name of his Lord Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Boy, that's a mouthful, huh? All right, well, this is uh, the end of part three. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and God the Son, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In his precious name, amen.